Darkness Volume 1. Hello everyone, my name is Morgan Ellis, and today I will be presenting a book review by Indra Perron. Non-fiction horror book that I read, y'all probably seen a movie, it's called The Conjuring, or oh, I'll probably be saying it wrong, but, uh, I read the part one right now. Uh, I'm still I'm re I'm uh, reading volume two right now, but I'm I read volume one. And I was like, man, you know what'd be dope if like freaking I did a review on it. So without further ado, the story begins in 1964 in Rhode Island, the Perron family of seven. The dad's name was Roger, Mom, Carolyn, and five little girls, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, and Cynthia. And they all soon were going to have an additional member, newborn baby. Her name's April. Initially, the setting begins in a suburban area. The family were having issues with the neighbors. Like one incident, that dog got killed by a gang of school children boys then they had another incident where the neighbor had a car accident crashed in front of their house and the guy died and the wife she accused carolyn of witchcraft i was like time's out my nigga hold on like i don't know what type of friendship carolyn and the lady had the accusing her but come on like how the fuck you gonna Blame her for your husband, who probably was drunk or some shit, crashing into y'all house. Like, you know, Carolyn tried to apologize to her, baked her a cake, and uh, she ain't appreciate it. So, you know what I mean? The Perron family, they're growing disgruntled with their living situation. The Perrons are now looking for a new residence to raise their children. Dun, dun, dun. Fast forward to 1971, you know, Carolyn and Roger, they went to go um, find a house. They went to go see the house. They seen it in a uh, newspaper ad. And when they got there, it was this old man, his name, Mr. Kenyon. You know, he lived alone in the house. Like, uh, what the hell going on? He lived in that mother by himself. You know, it was a pre-colonial home for decades. And not once did Mr. Kenyon mention paranormal activity. He just told the dad that him and his family should always sleep with the lights on. Like, bro, come on, bro. It's just, it, if, so, if I were to go buy a house, right, and you know it's an old house, if the, if the, if the real estate agent told me or the homeowner, if they told me that when you go to sleep, just uh, just keep the lights on. Like, he said to always have the lights on. Like, bro. Anyways, man. They end up moving in. You know, the whole family move in. You know what I'm saying? Everybody getting situated. Uh, the dude told them. He warned them. Keep the lights on. Initially, Roger didn't know what Mr. Kenya meant by keep the lights on at night but soon they would experience firsthand of what that meant starting with the mom was at home uh you no know, babysitting april the newborn first week there after move in she went put uh april to nap and she heard someone moving around upstairs and everybody at school, you know, all the other kids, they at school. And Roger, you know, Roger was a truck driver. And he on the road. So it's just a newborn and just her there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she heard somebody moving around those stairs. And, uh, you know, it just, from there, it was up. You know, the presence there soon became even more present by attacking Carolyn with a scythe blade. Excuse me, a scythe blade. Now, if y'all know what that is, that's that's the thing that you see like 
the fucking like Grand Reaper depicted, like them that shit, like that big ass knife he be holding, or whatever. She got attacked with the sky blade one day because that got they got a little like a, a barn or whatever, and you know, she went out there and shit one time one day, and that mug just came down on her like, like for real, like that mug like the nigga the ghost tried to kill her ass, kill her in the barn house. But to the house's main evil entity showing up, tormenting her husband, Roger, while they slept one night and nearly driving. You know, they used to be a happy couple. Now they on the verge of divorce. The spirit identified Bathsheba Sherman. She really had it out for Carolyn due to what I think was jealousy of the couple and, you know, they family. And I can't remember the quote, but uh, Bathsheba said to Carolyn one night, she said something like, uh, it's a fucking ye mistress or some some weird ass quote. You know what I mean? But it, it was crazy, though. It was crazy. Like, they, she showed up. It wasn't just her, like the ghost Bathsheba. It wasn't just her that showed up and warned her. She had a whole, like, a cult. I'm talking about that house. Hella honey. That house was hella honey. But uh, Carolyn carried on nonetheless, not ever wanting to mention to anyone of her own experiences and encounters. But to make a long story short, they stayed there for over a decade until they had the financial means to move. And uh, yeah, they endured 10 years of scary interactions. The children who, of course, grew into their teens in the meantime and would invite friends over from school who had experiences of their own. From Bathsheba being a ghost who would attach herself to each of them by hitchhiking, passenger. She would literally appear inside of their vehicle when they left. When she appeared, Bathsheba, when she would appear in the car with them, like, they can smell her first. Like, they said she had a a very foul odor when she came around. Or when she, whenever she was, like, in the house or when she would hitchhike in the car. Like, they said you can smell her. It scared them, convincing even the outsiders from non-believers to believer. The author, she spoke a lot about the two historical investigators, like y'all probably seen in the movie. She spoke a lot about them. I think the Warrens, Lori Warren or something like that, whatever. But yeah, she, and it was kind of weird how she was like, how, like the time frame, like when she would talk, I'm like, is like, did they come at the end when y'all left or are they there? Like right now, like it was confusing. It was, I couldn't tell, but she, you know what I mean? She talked a lot about them though. And I already got volume two. I'm in volume two right now. You know what I mean? Once I finish that and I probably, and I mean, do a book review on that, too. That's my book review, man, on Volume 1, House of Light, House of Darkness. I would highly recommend it. That shit fucking scary, mate. It was bloody scary. <laughs> it was scary. At least to say. But, yeah, man. You people, y'all should get the book. I probably dropped the link, uh... You know what I mean? Y'all can just check it out for y'all self and shit. But, uh, yeah, that was my book review. And uh, I'm about to get back to reading volume two. I hope you guys enjoy my book review. If this video gets five likes, I'll do a uh, review of the number two, volume two. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Have a good one.